What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down five tips to be a better quarterback. So we're going to talk about some of the mechanical aspects of the quarterback position, how to make these off-platform throws, on-the-run throws, and how you guys can change up arm angles and what's the proper footwork back in the pocket. So I hope this video gives you guys some value, but also, fellas, if you guys want to get a quarterback arm strength bundle, so a four-week specific gym program to improve your arm strength and all of the mechanical aspects that go into improving your arm strength, getting more velocity on the ball, check out that very first link in the description, you guys, for an arm strength bundle discounted price today $40 off the original value that we were offering this program at so I hope we can get you guys on that soon again a four-week gym program and the mechanical aspects of getting more velocity more distance on your throws hope we can get you guys on that soon let's get started with this video so the first thing that I want to talk about here is I want to talk about your front hip drive and how your hips are what's going to be able to make this throw so we look at Aaron Rodgers right here now the biggest like misconception that a lot of people used to teach about the quarterback position and this is the first tip is that you want to be nice and relaxed and let your hips do the work now the big misconception, as I was saying, is that you want to hold this ball way up high by your ear, right? So now, when you hold this football and you hold it up by your ear and you're nice and super tense, and yes, there are some exceptions. Some guys have a higher ball carriage than this. I'm not saying this is the perfect ball carriage. However, you want to be relaxed up here, and you want to let your hip drive do the work, right? So you guys are probably all, if you're familiar with this page, have heard me talk about hip drive, heard me talk about hip mechanics, right? So we're not going to dive too far into that because I don't want to be repetitive, but this relaxed upper half allows you to create that energy with your lower half because your body can only produce so much force, right? So if you're super tense, you're holding that ball up super high by your ear and your traps are super flexed, your motion's going to be flawed because you're not relaxed. So you want to relax. You want to hold this thing like they call this opposite equal, where like you hold the ball in the middle, your opposite sides, your left side and your right side, they're opposite, but they're equal. So like you're, you're holding the ball, your front side looks exactly like your right side. So when you go to throw, you can have this nice clean motion. And you see how much Rogers is able to transfer weight. He's able to drive and get weight from this back leg to this front leg, which allows his front hip to to open up and you see when his hips rotate through when your hips can come through before the football your front hips open it up your hips get parallel to the target before the football comes through that helps you with torque that helps you with more consistent motion and more consistent like mechanical path with your arm with your arm going back okay so that's the most important part is being relaxed enough with your upper half so you can allow your lower half to transfer weight and rotate through with your hips so what I mean by transferring weight is you see like when Rodgers goes to throw most of his weight is back here obviously you want to be like maybe like 70 80 80% of your weight on that back foot, like 30, 25, 20% on that front foot, right? A lot of people say 60, 40, some people say even, but you don't want to have too much weight on your front foot because if you don't have enough weight on your back leg, there's no drive and then you'll get too far ahead of yourself. This front hip will lock out and you'll throw more with your shoulders. You'll swing your elbow down here, open up your front shoulder. So it's very important that you keep like 80, 70, 80% on that back leg so you can transfer that weight to the front foot and that weight transfer going around, not going up when you rotate rotate around like you're rotating on an axis and getting the weight to the front foot that allows you to really snap through with that ball okay that allows you to really rotate through and have a little bit more torque on this thing so let's watch thing full speed again one more time from rogers great job rotating through staying relaxed with his upper half so that's the first tip to improve your game to be a better quarterback make sure you relax with that ball carriage you don't hold that thing up super high so now we're going to be looking at this other clip here from rogers now the second tip to be a better quarterback is because the game is changing and you got to get used to throwing from these weird angles okay so you're going to hear me talk a lot about off platform today, changing up arm angles, how we can do that. So that's what we're going to focus on with this clip right now. Now, Rogers, you, but again, not just from Rogers, not just from Mahomes. You see this from guys who maybe don't have the, you know, Rogers. I don't know if he had a baseball background or not. Obviously, Mahomes did, like Kyler Murray did. But you see guys like Lamar Jackson, right? Everybody like Stafford. I'm not sure if he had a bas baseball background either. But those guys change up that arm angle so frequently. The game is changing, right? It's not that simple. Hold the ball up by your ear, come over the top, spread your chest, you know, swing your front elbow down. It's not the old mechanics, right? The game is continuously changing and changing and changing. And these are the throws that you've got to be able to make if you want to evolve with the game, right? Now, if you're, if you're, you have a coach who's maybe not working these types of things, you maybe want to start looking out for what's, you know, in your best interest. Like, hey, listen, I need to start working these types of throws because that's what they're looking for at the next level. They're looking for guys who can extend the play and make the hard throws, not just a simple drop back, three step, one hitch and throw and just be able to hit a dig, only be able to hit first reads, right? So now you see when Rodgers makes this throw. So let's talk about how we're going to be able to change of arm angles, right? The mechanics stay the same, right? We still want to be nice opposite equal right here. You still want to be more so loaded on your back leg and then be able to transfer that way. You see how he does such a great job of transferring, driving for this back foot. And that's why he kind of has that. Everybody loves to talk about how he does that little like pop step, right? That's what we call that. Or like a 
hop, you know what I mean, where you strike the ground, you see how like his foot comes out of the ground almost, it looks like. He's doing that because of how much he's transferring weight. When you guys have momentum back here in the pocket and you're actually moving around and when you actually transfer weight correctly, your front foot naturally will do that pop. It's something that you can work on, especially when we're off platform, we're gonna get into that later. But that little pop step helps with that weight transfer and that weight transfer helps with getting your front hip open and the front hip opens up your hips and that when the hips come through before the ball, we get torque like we were talking about earlier. So now, when I get to change up my arm angle, it's really important, right? Because you see how Rodgers is here. He's almost having to throw around a defender. It's really important that, quote unquote, what I say is you want to trust your hands. You want to, you want to make sure that you're thinking of your hands as like you're throwing at a dartboard. You don't want to think of your hands as like you're just, oh, I'm just going to let my arm be along for the ride. But what a lot of guys will do is when they try to change up arm angle, they'll dip out of there with their front side to, to, make, to make up for it, right? Because they think that when you swing your front shoulder and you like, because a lot of people used to teach like you want to be lined up and you want to replace like you start with your front shoulder on the target you want to finish with your back shoulder on the target and your front shoulder should be almost facing behind you a lot of guys will compensate to do that to throw sidearm they'll swing this way out because they know that'll affect release point and that's what they got to do to get sidearm but that's not the case it's like you want to treat it like almost like baseball like we were talking about you want to keep your front hand nice and disciplined and you want to trust your hands around a defender so by front hand discipline i mean not letting your elbow almost go down to your hip and not letting your shoulder open and swing way out because if you swing your elbow down to your hip what'll happen is your release point will be pushed up because your body's split down a midline you almost want to pretend like there's a pole going down the middle of your back and you just want to rotate solely with your hips and keep your front side disciplined so your front hand stays by your face your front elbow doesn't swing down and you stay square with your shoulders and your hips at the target so that release point isn't affected so when you do want to actually change up arm angle and change up that throw to have to throw around a defender you want to trust those hands you want to almost think of it like you're turning and two in baseball and you almost like flick that wrist exactly where we want this thing to go and if that has to be around a defender you got to be disciplined with your upper half to be able to do so okay so i hope that makes sense in terms of how to change it up your arm angle let's watch the thing again full speed one more time great job by rogers changing up that arm angle and threading this needle over the middle so now the third tip i want to talk about about being a better quarterback is your base okay so this is where a lot of guys struggle a lot of guys struggle with this because they don't know how to actually move in the pocket correctly so let's watch the thing full speed from alan right here and alan when you look at film of him when he was at um, Wyoming and you look at film of him now, the biggest difference is his base because the boy, a big knock on him coming out of college was that he had this real long stride, his front foot. And you watch even tape of him at the senior bowl. It's, it's, it's a great, it's honestly really interesting to see. But when he's at that senior bowl, he has such a long stride and it throws off his mechanics so much. But now he's one of the best, smoothest throwers in the league, right? Top five quarterback last year in the league, right? So it's important that you guys understand how important your base is, right? So now when he's going back here, the base is everything, right? Because when you're back here and you're in a balanced position, you almost want to think of it like you're on like a skateboard, right? Like you're on, when you're on a skateboard, your feet aren't super close together and they're not super wide. They're kind of just outside of your shoulders, right? But you're still in an explosive position to where your feet are underneath you. Because if you're too wide and your feet are super wide, when you go to drive off this back leg and try to transfer weight, your back leg trails behind. You want to be able to get your back leg through. So now he's in such a good base that that stride, look at how small that stride is. That stride's almost in place because when you're in a good base like this, that strides out there to just catch you, right? So I'm in a good base. If I'm narrow, you're going to take the same stride. It's just, it's going to take you a little bit longer because you actually have to step forward. But if you're already in this good base where your feet are just outside your shoulders, that stride's already there. So the stride can be quicker, which will allow your motion to be faster. A quick stride doesn't guarantee a quicker motion, but it allows the process to start faster. So if you have a good stroke with your upper half where you're in this opposite equal position, and then you're able to drive with your hips, yeah, yeah, the motion is going to be faster because your front foot's down faster and you could start the sequence a little bit faster. Okay. So that's the third thing I want to talk about. That's the third thing I want to mention to you guys about becoming a better quarterback is you got to have that good base. You want your feet to be just outside your shoulders, wide enough to where you're in a balanced position, not close enough together to where you're going to have a long stride, but not too wide to where you're not going to be able to drive from your back leg. Let's watch the thing again, full speed right now. Again, I highly recommend you checking out tape of him when he was at Wyoming because it's such a difference and you see how much it has affected his game and how much of a better pass he has become simply because of those mechanical things that he has cleaned up, right? And obviously put in a ton of work for that. All right, so now we're going to look at this clip from Trevor Lawrence. So the fourth thing I want to talk to you about is when you're on the run, you want to make sure that you still have that dissociation. So what does that mean? Dissociation, you hear a lot of quarterback coaches talk about that. That's when you separate your hips from your shoulders. So on the run, what you want to do is you want to step with your throwing side leg. So it's watch full speed. You want to step with your throwing side leg in the direction of the throw because that helps with accuracy, okay? So now when we look at this story from Lawrence when he steps with 
his throwing side foot. He's stepping. You kind of tell just based on like where his knee is pointed right here. He's stepping in the direction of the throw. So what that does is that loads your hips there. Now, when you step with that direction, with that, with that throwing side foot, your hips are starting to drive at the target. Now, to be able to get torque, to be able to get power, you have to rotate your shoulders the same time you step with that leg to have that coil. So when you step with that right leg and you rotate your shoulders, now when you kick through with the left leg, you have that snap to the motion and you pull that hand almost, you just leave that hand by your chest like we were talking about with Aaron Rodgers. He doesn't swing the elbow. He doesn't swing the shoulder way out of there. Now we have this snappiness. Now we have torque to the motion and we actually have a clean release point because look at where that hand is nice and tight. Release point is clean. Kicking the left leg through after we step. So again, that left leg kicking through is no different than when you throw normally and you go to throw and you bring your back leg through. On the run, everything is just kind of flipped, right? So make sure that we're stepping with the right leg. That loads my hips. As I step with the right leg, I rotate my shoulders. So now I'm loaded. It's just a coil. It's going to be a spring off my hand. So when I kick the left leg through, all I got to do is stay disciplined in my upper half, and that ball is trailing my hips, and I have a ton of velocity on this throw. It's a perfectly mechanically sound throw. So to get more power on the run, guys, that's what I want to talk about in this fourth tip, how to get more power on the run throwing. You want to make sure that you step with your throwing side leg as you rotate your shoulders so you get more pop on the ball. Let's watch it again full speed. Great job by Lawrence kicking through, being able to drive this ball downfield. So now the last one we're going to be looking at here is Baker Mayfield, and we're going to be talking about off-platform throws. So again, the game is going is changing, right? The game is changing. You see so many more quarterbacks being able to make throws like this, extend the play. That's what colleges are looking for, and guys, obviously in the NFL, that's what they're looking for, and they're looking for dudes who can make these uncomfortable throws. So these are throws that you guys can practice all the time when you're, especially when you're just throwing to a stationary target. You're throwing by yourself. You're throwing at a net. Whatever you got to be able to practice these throws. Even if you don't have anybody to throw to, get maybe like a towel. Put a towel in your hand and work on your release and work these types of movements because it's all about getting comfortable. So he's going to work this thing we call a hook replace. So when Mayfield comes out here, he does a hook with the left leg. So that's what they call it. You want to hook with the left leg. Then you replace where your left leg was with your right leg. So now the whole reason you hook the front leg then replace with your back leg, again, this is like a baseball-esque type move. What that does is that gets your front shoulder, front hip, and front knee on the target as you are running full speed and escaping out. So it gets you loaded. It gets you set up, right? So you flip and you get set up, but you have, it does, it happens in two steps. It happens with a hook with your front foot and you replace where your front foot was with your back foot. That's how we get set. That's how we get ready to go. So now when we hook or place again, like I was talking about earlier in the video, you want to have like 70 to 80% of that weight on the back leg. If I get 70 to 80% of my weight on my back leg and I'm ready to drive and that front foot's nice and light, especially when I have momentum, all I can do is you see how well he's able to transfer his weight. You see how much weight he's able to get to here and how much weight he's able to shift to almost like the outside part of his leg. And watch what his front foot does. Kind of like we were talking about with Aaron Rodgers. Kind of like what we were talking about before. You see how it takes that little hop step right there. And now his hips are going through before the football. His front hand stays disciplined. That's torque. So make sure anytime we are off platform, you guys, we still want to focus on transferring weight. I still want to focus on rotating just because I'm off platform. Don't let yourself swing out and be super heavy with your front foot. Be nice and light on the front foot, heavier on the back foot. Be able to drive and rotate down that axis and be able to be consistent from these awkward throws. Guys are looking for, can these quarterbacks make the throws that we don't expect them to make? That's what they're looking for on film. That's what they want at the next level. Can you extend the play one? Can you get out of trouble? Two, can you make the throw? And three, can you make these uncomfortable throws that we don't expect you to make until you get to like that college level? That's what you're looking for in high school, guys. And obviously, if you're in that college level, these are the throws that you have to make because those windows to throw are small. The whole reason why he can't just completely stop his momentum, reset, hitch up and throw is because he doesn't have time to. He's good. That, those receivers are faster. Windows are smaller. So we got to get the ball out of my hand with as least wasted motion as possible. Let's watch it again. Full speed one more time. Great ball by Mayfield. Great job staying loaded on that back leg, being able to drive this ball downfield. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave those in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And again, if you guys want an arm strength bundle, $40 off the original value, guys, check out that very first link in the description. It's a four-week gym program to make you a stronger quarterback, to get more distance on your deep ball and an arm strength manual with all the mechanical aspects that we have that tie into arm strength and getting more velocity on the ball. Hope we get you guys on that soon. I'll see you guys next time.